नेक्स्ट स्पीकर बोला अत्यंत प्रतिष्ठित प्राध्यापक हो वेरी प्रेस्टिज प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर बेन्जामिन वाल्स ही कम्स फ्रम मोर्गन स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी इन लाइफ नर्स अबाउट समथिंग वेरी ब्रिफली एंड नॉट मोर देन थ्री मिनट्स प्रोफेसर वाल्स Thank you all very very much. I really am honored to be here. Um honored to have my colleagues. It is 11 sponsoring the Star uh Scholar Network. It's a really a extraordinary uh, opportunity here that we have to to talk about um essentially what makes America America both in the good and the bad. and i found it you know i i've been trained to pay attention to phrases and clauses that that don't translate so politics or dirty i guess doesn't have a translation in the poly it's 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 an american thing maybe i don't know i was supposed to be a joke um so i i just thought i was asked to to uh, say a few words about the history and it's perfect segue uh for for dr harry here because he kind of laid the foundation on the history of gerrymandering um i'm actually going to talk uh, for just a couple minutes about sort of the the journey to what i refer to as universal franchise which is the right to vote um it's one of the things that's really interesting as 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 a, a perceived at least to be a white american um you know raised in the public school system um the struggle is not really emphasized what's emphasized is the goal so we learn all about how wonderful the 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 accomplishments are and we don't really look, we're not really taught to pay attention to how how long and how difficult the struggle really have been so i'm going to begin um thank you um oh so my title american democracy in action the vote And it's interesting that it's it's also interesting that there this information I could not find collected in one place. Um we have, you know, it's sort of a symptom of America is that we have a history of of the 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 women the woman vote. We have the history of the of the African American vote, but we don't have a history of the vote. I'm like, oh, here's an opportunity for a book perhaps. Um because it but it but when you put it all together, you're really able to see how extraordinary and how lengthy the struggle is. So what I what I've done here is simply divided the history of of um, the American uh um land here into two parts. The British rule and the American rule. The British rule really started in uh not really that far from here in Jamestown. Uh 7, 1607 was when the first um the 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 colony was actually established that's that that's that, that actually survived there was an attempt to make colony in uh, north carolina prior to 1607 by sir walter raleigh they did not survive so um and then 1619 which is not on this date 1619 was the date of the first african slaves that were brought to this this country to this continent Now notice that 1607 the British rule ended in 1789 that's the date that is assigned to the implementation of the US Constitution. Um notice another a couple of points to make about that is that the in the constitution and these words remain in the constitution of the United States this is the document that we all live under. is that Africans enslaved Africans counted as 3/5 talk about gerrymandering 3/5 of a person for electoral purposes it was deemed that because the population of whites in the south were fewer than the population of whites in the north it was necessary to give slaves um to be count them as 3/5 of a person um so that the 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 south was more the electoral process was more equal um in the same document which is still present in the constitution today it, indians were designated as not counted of course that's american indians um that they were referring to um the constant the same constitution granted 
prior colonies the ability to set the voting requirement. So um, part of the reason why we have to continue to go through these processes, which is often a mystery to uh, to some uh, people from other countries, even even Europeans, why do we have to go through this over and over again? It's because the Constitution avoided the question altogether and said, you handle the problem, right? You deal with the voting requirement. Um, we're not going to make a decision, except in the case of, of Native, of, of, of uh, American Indians and enslaved Africans. That was decided by the Constitution. Um, and then the, so the states being, having been handed the ability to set the voting requirement, limit uh, enfr enfranchisement to property owning or tax paying white males. Um, so that's hence the uh, white gentleman farmer era. These are my, t my titles. And it lasted from 1789 to 1865. Um, and, e and gerrymandering occurred was as uh, the year, I forget the year that you gave us, Harry, but the year was um, of the gerryman gerrymandering when it, um, Jerry, the, the uh, Massachusetts, 1830 or something. Yeah. So, so you see, that was the, that was the, that was the era where only white men who had property for the most part could could vote, and they were still playing dirty politics then. Um, then the Civil War occurred in 1861, and I've actually, uh, here's my short version of the Civil War, okay, and, and why how it came about. So the Southern slave states, dependent upon the institution of slavery, the enslavement of Africans, politically, economically, and culturally. Their entire culture sat upon the, um, the institution of slavery. And that they, the, the Southern states sought, because when, when Lincoln was elected, or it might have been just before, but they were in the process of, sinking, of seeking constitutional guarantees that slavery would be, would be continued. Remember, or maybe you don't remember, but the... Um, uh, Great Britain had already legalized uh, um, slavery by 18 before 1861, and there was there was plenty of of uh, anti-slave sentiment in the in this country, um, and so the Southern states wanted to make it impossible to remove slavery, and then Lincoln got elected without any electoral votes from the, from the Southern states. And at that point, the South knew that it, that the writing was on the wall and that slavery would eventually be made illegal. And so they seceded from the union. Um, but so 18, so the war ended in 1865. Most of us know with the North as the victors, um, meaning that the union was preserved, meaning that slavery became illegal, um, and the African Americans, what were then at, by then African Americans, because it had already been 200 years of slavery um, or more on this on this land, they they became free, and it took. Um, well, go ahead and change the slide. So. But the but actually from 1865 at the end of the Civil War to 1965 it it there was a hundred a hundred years of discrimination where blacks were virtually prohibited to vote from voting in one way or another. Um, so 18 there were it took one took the 14th Amendment that well, actually the 13th 14th 15th Amendment which guaranteed every American male citizen the right to vote. It took the 19th Amendment to grant granted women the right to vote. And the 24th Amendment was in 1964, which abolished poll taxes and literary, literary, literacy taxes to, to vote, to, pay, to create the, uh, pave the way for the Voting Rights Act of, 18, of 1965. So it took a hundred years from, you know, of, 
of, of, of black people trying to vote in America, being, for, being forced to pay money, being forced to take ridiculous tests. Um, if I had more time, I would have provided you with evidence of that, that, that most white native born white Americans couldn't answer and still can't answer the questions that were required um, for, for black people to vote. Um, for all of those things to be abolished. So when we talk about preserving the vote, when we talk about the importance of this assembly right here, what we're really talking about is something that really wasn't made legal until 1965. That the struggles that, that led up to 1965, the number of years, the number of people, the number the amount of, of, of conversations, the amount of discussions, the, the protests, the campaigns, so on and so on and so on. And I would put gerrymandering as, if you can, could, could, could I go back a slide just for a second? In the gerrymandering was really part of the, the even though it happened a little before, it was part of the state's rights era where they were trying to control. It was it was realizing the naivete of the of the founding fathers where they believed that well if we just give everyone the vote then we can we can work it out well they they also didn't account for the possibility of um parties either people dividing into parties there was lots and lots of things unspoken undiscussed unrealized that were the the premise of the founding fathers was that we would all be on the same side and we would all be serving the same God, and, and lots of these things turned out to be uh, problematic. So, so gradually over time, um, people, you know, tried to control power, tried to maintain power, and tried to prevent other people from getting power, and, and that's really what we're looking at in those from the beginning to the, uh, to the end. So, so last slide, I think. So today, what it, it's clear that the Voting Rights Act is under attack. The, um, the Supreme Court has weakened some of its provisions. Um, it, and the result, the evidence of that, for, if those of you follow this, there's a flood of efforts by Republicans in particular to limit voting rights, to limit the voting in ways that tend to affect minorities directly. Um, things having to do with, you know, mail-in ballots, things having to do with recruitment of, 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 um, uh, of new voters. Uh, all, just all of these very, very small rules are in being put into place to try to limit the, to limit people from voting, um, and have their voices heard. And it seems to be directly targeting, uh, minorities in particular. So this is, this is where we are today. This is why this meeting matters. This is why we need to, to pay attention to the fact that history is, is alive. That if, if it's, that, you know, it's, it's easy to get comfortable. It's a very, com relatively speaking, this is comfortable material society. It's very easy to get sort of seduced by the warmth and by the, you know, the comfort and the convenience. But the truth is that there's only been a few years since 1965, and the truth is is that those that memory, as you as I you all are from Nepal, so you understand how long memory can be. You understand how people belonging to a certain religion and how they carry the issues from generation to generation to generation. You understand those things. So, so from 1965 to today, I was five years old in 1965 that that's not a very long time. And what we're really seeing now is a re, I see it as a pushing back, right? Against the Voting Rights Act, against the universal suffrage, trying to return the country to what it was for all those years. So we have to continue to gather, we have to continue to talk, we have to continue to vote. And with that, I thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Wells. You always um, inspire me and um, sometimes I'm amazed like how you can make so complex things so simple and can convey in such a short time. Thank you. One more round of applause for <laughs> Professor Wells.
वाले इतिहास बताऊं देखो ना उनसा पर हमने क्या बीच से ना होता है ना वाले यो देश में डेमोक्रेसी को प्रयोग वही रखे बस है ना यो इंजस्टिस बनने रेसिज्म बनने भेदभाव बनने पॉलिटिकल जरिये में अंडरिंग जस्ता तत्व और जहाँ पर नहीं होता फिर ये ये तो अमेरिका हमारे ओर दे � बुझने जरूरी था। अन्य तपाईंहरु जति जनाहिया आज आउनु भएछ, तपाईंहरु सबैको आमी सम्मान गर्छौं।